Cursive. Okay, so now we can continue execution inside the subroutine S1. The first line is line 5, <clears throat> which computes the difference between Y and X and then store the result back into Z. So you have to look up column G, which is Y, column G, which is parameter Y, and we find out that parameter Y is an alias of column C. Column C currently has a value of 5. Then we look at x. x is column f, which is a passed by value parameter. It has a value of 11 at this point. So it becomes 5 minus 11, which gives me a result of negative 6. Negative 6 is stored to z, but we don't update the uh, by reference parameter. Instead, we update the column that it is referring to. So column d is the one that is now updated to a value of negative 6. Okay. <clears throat> Why wouldn't that be? <coughs> because it's passed by reference. When you pass by reference, you don't change the parameter. You change the column that the parameter refers to. Okay. Yep. How many points are you talking? That's a major thing. I mean, that's pretty much you know the the main idea of passing by reference. So there's another one. You know, the next one is also passed by reference. But basically, these two statements, you know, will check you know basically how much you understand uh, passing by reference as opposed to passing by value. Yep. I'm on the module, um, the way the notation you have for it, like AKA, like you have these double arrows. Yeah, you can, use the, you can use the notation that I used in the notes. Okay. That's basically the older notation. Yeah, like <clears throat> the double-sided arrow is a little harder to type. But you, you can, as long as your notation is consistent with either my current notes or my old notes, it'll, it'll be fine. But the main point is, I don't want to see a six negative six here. That would be that would be a problem. Yep. Uh, I just want to like clarify our notation, but like our note on the top of it, uh, just putting a uh, P instead of the AK column P. Is that fine? Say that again. Instead of like writing a lot of AK column P, I just want to put a P. I wrote a note about it, saying what it means up top. You wrote what again? Sorry. Uh, like a, a, I added a line for I had a note about what my notation meant, so you understand. Is that fine? Is okay, that should be fine. Right. The the key is I don't want column H to get updated. All right, I didn't update anything in column H. Okay, you you updated the right column, right? Yeah. Yeah, that should be fine. You know, that's because that's the that's the real indicator whether you understood uh, <coughs> passing by reference when you do the homework assignment. <coughs> Because I can, I can see that some people might, you know, use AKA column D here and still update column H to a new value of negative 6, which would not be correct. That would not be the right thing to do. Okay, then we have um, line 6. Line 6 is Y gets the value of X. So we have to evaluate X first. X has a value of 11. And Y is a pass by reference parameter. It refers to column C. So column C is now updated to a value of 11. Then we go to line 7. Line 7 is the end of the subroutine. We deallocate all the columns, including the references. But it doesn't do anything to the columns that they refer to because all we are doing is erasing the references to the other columns. But column C and column D are not affected at this point anymore because they are already changed. <coughs> The other point, the other thing that is important is you can see that on line five, column D is updated right away. On line six, column C is updated right away. In other words, we don't wait until the end of the execution of this invocation to update these two columns you know, at the very end. Every time you change parameter Y, you know, <clears throat> every time you change parameter Y, column C gets updated. Every time you change para parameter Z, um, column D will get updated. So that's really, really important as, a, as the effect or the mechanism of passing by reference. <coughs> After line 7, we follow the return line number and return back to line 14. Line 14 is the end of subroutine S2, so we'll do the same thing again, except this time on column B, C, and D. So we'll mark these things as deallocated and then use the return line number to go back to post, and that concludes the trace. 
Are there any questions about this trace? I think the most important two lines, or I would say three lines, will be this line here, because I want to see that Y is an alias, or somehow refer to column C. I want to see that Z somehow refers to column D. And then the next two lines are actually the more important lines, because I want to see that you know, column D itself is updated, column C itself is updated. Now the calculation can be off a little bit, you know, someone can make a careless mistake you know, when they calculate the difference, and that's fine, you know, I would take a very small amount of point off, you know, it's not going to be major by any means, but the important part is these two columns have to be updated when we execute call, uh, line 5 and line 6 of the pseudocode. Yep. Um, I did the same on row 7 that you have there with the line 13, return line XYZ, uh -huh. but um, when you went to row 8, I actually did line, uh, I went back to the algorithm, did like line 2, line 3, line 4. Okay, so you mean you're in your trace, you, you so also I have... I out instead of accounting it all on line okay. 8. That's okay, you know, as I said, you know, as long as, you know, when you set up column G, you mention it is an alias of column C, that's what counts. Okay. <clears throat> because the parameters are set up, you know, in a sequential way, but you might want to change to this format later on, yeah. because we don't really set up parameter X, Y, and Z on lines 2, 3, and 4, because lines 2, 3, and 4 are not a part of the invocation itself, and parameters are always set up by the invocation, not inside the subroutine that is invoked. So, in essence, like that, kind of treat it as like if it was a, a Java method where the passed in that when you call it. Yeah, a, a method is basically a subroutine, but it has a, a very special sub. It has a very special parameter that you cannot see. Right. Is it called me in uh, Java or still called self in Java? Uh, this. This. Okay. <clears throat> but it's a hidden parameter, but it does, it is one of the parameters that is passed in. Okay, okay. so any other questions about the last homework assignment, the one that is due today at 5.30? Nope, okay. So let's go ahead and talk about the new one, because the new one is, well, new. <clears throat> And one, you know, one person commented, hmm, that looks a little bit too simple for a homework assignment from TAC. So that means you know, we should be extra careful with this one. If it looks too simple, it probably is not as simple as it seems. Is this the one due next month? Yep, this is the one that's due next Monday. So you have about a whole week you know, to work on this one, but I recommend people to work on it as soon as you can so that if you encounter any questions in terms of the concepts involved, we can talk about it on Wednesday. Now this one is only involving, this one is testing you know, whether you understand the concept of returning <coughs> values, which is something that we talked about last time. And in this case, it is not like Fibonacci. You know, Fibonacci would say n minus 1 for 1 and n minus 2 on the other one. Did we talk about Fibonacci? Okay. So this one is actually, you know, different, okay, I wouldn't say any easier or harder, but it is different. Um, but in terms of tracing it, it's about the same as Fibonacci. It's just that, you know, the, the second part would look pretty much like the first part, which makes it easier, makes it, makes it more possible to copy and paste. <clears throat> okay, any questions about this one? If there are any questions about this particular assignment, I would go back to the class notes. There are several things you can look up now, you know, extra resources that was not available at the beginning of the semester. The first thing would be the updated material on subroutines, which is something that I have been working on and still working on it, you know, you know currently. But it has the necessary information that you need to deal with this homework assignment. Um, particularly, you want to go to section 7, which talks about return values, <clears throat> and particularly uh, section 7.3, return to a return statement. This one is just you know, factorial, but once you understand factorial, 
you know, you should be able to do the homework assignment. Um, the focus is on this line here. Line six returns a value, but the value that you're returning depends on one value, which is uh, your parameter, and then the other value is the invocation or the v return value of the invocation of factorial itself again. So from that perspective, it is similar to the homework assignment that you are dealing with today or you know, for this week. <clears throat> so this is one of them. And then the other one you know, is invoke inside an invoke or a simple case of returning a value, which is the basic one that we have talked about. On top of all, on top of these um, examples in the notes, which are really helpful because I have you know the explanation you know on it on it, either on its own column or below the line that it is commenting. Um, let me just go back to this one here and show you what I mean by that. So on line twelve, which is a tricky line, you know I have you know, a long full explanation of what is going on on that particular line of trace. So this is a good resource you know, for your homework assignment. The other one is one of the files that we have captured on last Wednesday. So let's see, last Wednesday would be the 17th. <coughs> and Fibonacci would be a very good sample program to revisit for this homework assignment, because if you look at Fibonacci, it looks a little bit more complicated because we have to check for n equals to 1 as well as n equal to 0. But when you look at the recursive call, which means you know the invocation of itself, it is very similar, except this time we have n minus 1 going to n for one of the invocations, and n minus 2 going to n for the second invocation. But in terms of the trace, the structure of the trace, it will be similar. It won't be exactly the same, but it will be somewhat similar. The mechanisms involved are almost exactly the same. It's just that the logic of the two pseudocodes are arranged slightly differently. Okay. Are there any questions about you know how to go how to proceed with your current homework assignment that is due next Monday? No questions. Okay. <clears throat> We're good. I have also expanded the notes you know, here a little bit, so I need to go back to this part here. I have expanded it a little bit, but this time not at the very end, so that means you, know, you have to be a little bit more careful when you look for that stuff. It is in section six, section 6.3 is new. So I'll just kind of go ahead and talk about it a little bit today because you will encounter this when you get on to the, to the CISP 360 class as well as CISP 370 and also when you program in Python. <clears throat> the question is, what can we use to pass by reference to an, another subroutine? That's the question. It doesn't seem like a very complicated question because it seems like, well, you know, we can only pass something that lives in a column by reference to another subroutine, or we can only pass you know, something that is already passed by passed to me by reference, so I have the actual reference already. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and take a look at this pseudocode here. This pseudocode has you know, one subroutine that is you know, that has one passed by reference parameter, which is x. Its only job is to reset parameter x to zero, which is not much, you know, not, not complicated at all. The main subroutine has a local variable i. And the first invocation is pretty easy, pretty standard. All I'm doing is to use local variable i to specify parameter x. Local variable i definitely has a column that it lives in. As a result, in the first invocation to reset, parameter x will become a reference to whatever column that local variable i is living in. Does that make sense? Okay. <clears throat> but the second one does not seem to make any sense. 